many misfortunes of mine. Fortunes, too. And now I'm a seasoned translator, professional of sorts, spending nights rustling pages of doll's musty tome, reveling in the chirping of archaic words, and muttering out loud as if over a book of Tarot. But I'll give thanks, though I don't know to whom, not to myself, nor to God, nor to chance, nor to blind divination, that as I whisper at night to the Paris outside of my room, I still hesitate, pausing in awe before hammering out each translation. No, not to myself, nor to God, nor to chance, nor to a call from above, but to that tongue which believed my sincere declaration of love. Um, this one um, is another one. This is not an anthology. This one was just a published in St. Petersburg Review um, last month. Um, but I think it also describes sort of her experience as an immigrant in Paris. Um, so I really like it. This one is untitled. Scratched up by scores of boot-clad feet, scribbling first drafts on a blank sheet, gray cobbles line the bookshop row, constant reminders of the north, its misty glow, of other shores, the planks of scaffolds, of clay that lies beneath, and of the mud on boards, and of the memory of you, running, heels clicking, down that scaffolding, to an unarmed mind it seems unfathomable now, but your eye, unaided, will see just how the mind can fly, past reason, when in the east the sun's already set, while here it still shines bright, and yet already covered with my scribbling, like thawing skating rinks in spring, those foreign trampled cobblestones are fated to become drafts of my poems. And I'll read uh, another one that's... Uh, Um, another one um, that it was in the anthology that's a little bit more lighthearted. Um, yeah, entitled. Oh, how great it can be when for days, weeks sometimes, nothing crowds in my head, nothing comes to my mind, as if headphones with music slid over my ears, music that smoothly sways like a small ship at sea. Here's the captain at helm, there the sailors on board. Over the radio shack, the loudspeaker plays at half swell. But mere echoes are all that reach to the far shore. Voices reach the near shore, but just for an instant, a spell. And I'll do one more by her, um, which is... Um, um, called it starts with the near-sided shadow, um, and uh, references to Moscow here, memories in Moscow. A near-sided shadow You'll plunge in, swim through the aquarium of light. Your moist hand will trace the invisible boundary lines. Peel back the curtain. I'll bitterly give myself over to darkness and fright. I'll pierce the dear half-winter landscape with sobbing and cries. Wet alley pavements roll into lines of black ice underfoot. Strips of dawn go like embers in the lampshade's lace. Slippery bench, tearful midnight incessant flute tugs on my soul as if on a parachute release. And to these, frozen down to the core and chilled to a fever, to my patriarch ponds, stretched out squalidly in the night air, I'll press, attach, freeze, quiet myself. Will you get me, forgive me, run to me down the stately festive flights of stairs? And I want to finish up with a poem that's not by Grabanevskaya, uh, but um, one of my favorite poets, um, Mikhailai Zabalutsky. Um, I really enjoy translating him, and I discovered this poem earlier this year. Um, and what I really like about it is the way that it talks about poetry. Um, that's sort of made of these composite words that are just flying around, and until the poet sort of puts them together, um, they're just these little insects, and when they come together, they can be this really beautiful uh, ensemble. So it's called Fireflies. Words are like fireflies wielding big lanterns. When, scatterbrained, you haven't peered into the dark. Their virgin flame is dark and unsubstantial. Their animated specks bear no distinctive mark. But take a look at them in southern Sochi in the spring, 
where oleanders sleep in festive flowering, where a full firefly ocean glows or the abyss of night, and waves beat up against the shore, weeping in flight, condensing all the world into one single breath. From underfoot, the Earth's globe starts to slip away. And now, it's not their lights that drone about the universe, but distant thunderheads quivering flames. The breath of unfamiliar tambourines and trumpets, there roams around the ether, humming slowly. For what are meager words, mere likenesses of insects? And yet, those creatures were obedient to me. As I say, you can check out more of my work on my website. Very straightforward. <laughs> I should have called my website uh, instead of Andre, Andriusha Gritzman. <laughs> um, there are a few more copies of uh, Stranger at Home anthology. It's a very interesting one. It's an American poetry with an accent of American poets for whom English is not a, a native uh, language. And the works of some of the people who are here, Alex Segal and and um, uh, Alexei Tsvetkov are there. I have a few more copies. Uh, Alexei Tsvetkov is, uh, I don't know when word, you know, word to start and word to finish, is, uh, well, I'll tell you one thing. It will be clear for you. I mean, just remember that evening and reading by Alexei Tsvetkov. It's, very, it's going to be a very, very important memory in your life. This is all I'm going to say. Okay, I will read, to honor the anthology, I will read one uh, poem that is in the anthology. If I remember correctly, it's, it's my own translation of my own Russian poem. And then I will read probably a couple of poems uh, that are English originals. The Mirror. Without fail, our thoughts in these vexing times are with the emperor, lonesome in his icy palace, sunk in his unremitting silence. A spy was trampled at the Jasper Gate. The eastern garrison has run out of rice. One hears of a decree to round up and butcher young maidens for the soldiers too. I give it little faith, although the neighbor's youngest has been missing two nights in, row, in a row. The new servant took off, was gone till midnight, came back without his cap reeking of wine. The Jurchen are within the walls, he says, and the plaza by the pearl shrine, and then the plaza by the pearl shrine, blood was ankle deep, glistening like a black mirror. He's been too insolent of late. The steward must be requested to apply the rod. More Jurchen, those Jurchen are just the rules for their ilk. A visit from, a visit from the venerable Yi. His brittle sheets of tan calligraphy obtained from a bookseller for a trifle. Trifle indeed, but who would want to hurt a friend? I had them fetch some wine and plums, the last of the old stock, but it was worth it. Never an evening was so full of mirth. On his way back, the venerable Yi was torn out of his litter, rushed to death with canes. Those Jurchen, nothing but the rules. A conflagration, this time in the west. The guards will have their work cut out for them. Curse the old gown, all matted, and it's cold. Should have dis dispatched them to stock up on brushwood. But there's no one to send, and none for sale. How splendid is the moon in the black velvet of the night sky in the black silk of smoke. Looks like the flare is aiming for the palace, from where the stable should be and the harem. I haven't cleaned my, bra cleaned my brush, the ink is dry. The emperor may be godlike, 
but he feels the fear. We know he is afraid for us, but we, alas, have hardly any words left to console him. Subway Metaphysics. I take the E-train from the 42nd. An aged gent is trying to convince my neighbor on the left that she will not die from her lethal and malignant ailment. She looks a bit. My neighbor on the right is a young girl in black up to her eyes, perusing the Quran. Her lips are moving. La ilaha illallah, she exhales, or something close enough. Squeezed in between the two despairs, I keep my calm and think, yes, I will die. No, there is no salvation. It is a secret they will never learn. And one more wasted opportunity. I was wandering once in a turbulent shopping mall as the Saturday rush started slowing down to a crawl. And I asked this girl, as, as my tootsies were getting sore, for the shortest way to the Nordstrom department store. Not that finding that Nordstrom was such an imperative task, just a random thought, and she was on the spot to ask. Or it may have been Macy's somewhere on the limb of the grid. It just seemed, it just seemed like the right time to ask her. So ask I did. She was hawking some Dead Sea ointments with time to buy it. But she seized her commerce and offered to be my guide. We, we kept traipsing like clockwork bunnies all day and night through the ever-thickening throng, through the fading light, where the very breath got sticky like cheesecloth that clings to the skin as my guide escaped on her clockwork wings leaving me with a voiceless multitude, barely awake, on a desert shore of some unexpected lake, neither Nordstrom nor friggin' Macy's inside, but instead an old gent on a hill to judge the quick and the dead. On the dead seashore, handing verdicts out in the nick of time, and I looked, and I wasn't among the quick. That was totally wasted. A gainful trip to the mall, picking someone to ask the way, is a judgment call. He's settling down, <clears throat> and I'll read some of my stuff now. Uh, one translation from the yeah, we're doing we're doing fine, Clarissa. Uh, one translation from the anthology, uh, and uh, a couple of my uh, poems. Uh, Vladimir Gandelsman, the room. Vladimir Gandelsman, it's in the anthology. My God. I entered the room at 7 o'clock, at the twilight time and the fall, sat and dead bulked the room with rhyme, emptiness sniffed me out of the door, and then crawled away to where there is not a soul. I took off my shoes, made three steps, lay down, thought of something, sort of turned off the lamp, but there was no light, not a thing about. Almost falling into a deep sleep, I woke up completely, opened my eyes. Was it emptiness trying to crawl into the room again? Miracles making on the way, that is, to set up mirror, armchair, the chest, without weaknesses. That is when the names are shadow of things and, f and float into sleep, float into torn off nobody's sleeves abyss. Was it a hiss of the infant's heat and simultaneous turning of hundred black discs 
the ones with eyes of fishes asleep, and the soul was empty, unseen and bleak. I reached for the lamp to light up the word that crossed my mind and lit up the notebook, and I opened it to let my speech out and said, my God, so he could start out. And a couple of my poems, not from that one. Um, the morgue. Everybody knows what the morgue is? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> if you are a poet, Druk, you do know. In a dormant corner of the hostel campus, morgue is a quiet heaven hidden in unkempt bushes by the abandoned workshop. Here, dead teach the living. Off school, my mom, a pathologist, would take me to work, most of my time spent outside in the jungle of tall July grass catching the grasshoppers. Inside, silent world of transparent jars with fixed organs and older motherly technician Rosa fixing lunch in the corner of the cluttered lab fried new potatoes, pickled cabbage, juicy gray rubbery sausage, strong tea in the pot, dinner, facility, winking, filling the glass with a lab alcohol. It was almost home. Cool marble floors, scratched wooden furniture, dusty files filled with the names of people who I was told died in the 1919 flu epidemic. I took my sandwich and off to the summer paradise at the dead end of the world. Prematurely aged janitor Maria, Maria would sit with me behind the building telling the city boy her village stories until mom would take me home, all in tears. Another autopsy on a boy of my age, fresh scratches from the soccer game still on his knees. New case of acute polio, I guess, before the Salk vaccine. I am a dreamer by day and night watchman by night. At night, I see dark clouds invisible on the black streaming sky. They fly in unknown direction. I think toward their cold destiny. I see the dwellers of other planets around. They don't have antennas, hoofs, and tails, as we think, but are transparent shadows living among us. And they don't know stories of burning bush and of three strangers. My grandmother is standing in the corner of my bedroom with my shirt in her hands, looking at the tear while I'm talking to her all night long. My cats are playing with little spirals of their DNA on the carpet. And I'm trying to talk to you. I'm talking to you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Since you don't answer, I'm trying to drown myself in my sleep, but can't. Since as a night watchman, I can't sleep. The night watchman doesn't sleep and alone have to watch the night. Hookers and Jones. Uh, Russian people know what, you know, who Jones are? Not yet. Everybody know? Not yet. <laughs> so. I have to educate you, Vladimir. Hookers and Jones. I turn on channel 20 in the faceless plastic hotel room. Real time story, documentary, Jones bust, soliciting. Curvy, drop-dead Latina female officer posed as a hooker. Miniskirt, 
long boots.